Wiedersehen. Uh, uh, tēnā koutou, um, Sophie Hoskins here, the Eons Outdoor Education Kaiarahi, and I've got Jane Townsend with me this evening, who is going to share with us the awesome um, program she had happening at Nayland College when she was teaching there, and um, I will let her tell you the story because it's pretty awesome, but um, yeah, just a great case study to uh, hear about and maybe get some awesome ideas. So I will pass it over to Jane. Um, thank you very much, Jane, for giving up your time this evening. Thank you, Sophie. Kia ora koutou. It's Jane Townsend here. As Sophie said, um, I was leading a project at Nalen College, and I'm just going to share a little bit of the learning journey. So it was based around this whakatauki, whaia te mataronga hei oranga mō koutou, so it's seek after learning for the sake of your well-being. So it's based on if students have that sense of belonging, if they have their well-being and hauora looked after, then they're going to be able to achieve academically as well. So that's what it was based on. And um, and it was built on a hui to, uh, taurima that we ran there. And that originally was for every year nine students. And it was for three days. So the initial one was around Matariki, and it was to celebrate Matariki. Hui Taurima is like a learning festival. And there was up to 19 activities that students could opt for. It included a pōhiri at Whakatū Marae and a place responsive orienteering where they learnt Purako of the area. And then they could choose a whole lot of different activities like Pacific voyaging and wayfinding. Waka ama, uh, weaving, uh, carving, uh, pedal boarding, and, and learning Purako of the Boulder Bank. So uh, going out to Abel Tasman. So it was a fantastic um, three days, but we felt like it wasn't enough. We wanted it to be a springboard for something more. And that was so that our students could have these experiences throughout the school year uh, and um, be able to build on what we've already done. And um, it was based around the place responsive and culture responsive pedagogies. And as we know, as humans, we, we build those lasting relationships with places. We care about places more when we connect with them and learning is enriched when we give it context. So you can't be actually experiencing a place rather than looking at pictures. And um, that's where we wanted to head. Because I was a new person to Nayland and I didn't know anyone in Nelson, I was experiencing uh, those same connections myself as I got to know the place and the people and the history and stories of the places that I mountain biked and paddled walker and kite and so I could see it through through my students eyes as well and that sense of belonging was important to me as a person and I could see the importance for our students and so our inquiry question so we had a, a group of really passionate enthusiastic teachers who were involved in the hui taurima and as the years went by we got more on board and it started off as a very much a PL uh, opportunity because we'd have people in from our local community to assist and our staff would learn from them. Also the initial years I got people um, contacts from the Bay of Plenty to actually come over and um, that meant we were able to run some really cool activities. So we came up with this inquiry question for our project and that is in what ways does implementing cultural and place responsive approaches build teachers capability to support student well-being and engagement so like I said at the beginning if our students are happy if they have that feeling of belonging they're going to be engaged in their learning and they're going to get those academic results uh, it was also based on um, Te Whare Tapa Whā by Mason Jury so all our visitors will um, be familiar with this and it's the four walls of the Faranui, which are the aspects of our well-being. Uh, but the most important part is you cannot have a, a whare without having land to uh, be based upon, to be upon. And that's uh, where our place responsive or tangata whenua tanga um, approach comes in. So uh, that was really um, an important aspect. So as you can see, harnessing the rich cultural capital, which our Māori learners bring to the classroom, um, facilitating participation of whānau and people with the knowledge of our local context, tikanga, 
history and language, and um, for our teachers to engage with students as learners and facilitators by generating opportunities for students to use who they are and bring what they know into the learning through these responsive contexts. And that was a real key and a big part of the capability for our staff. So they don't have to know everything. They can learn from their students. Um, there are many opportunities for our students to lead, which I'll talk a little bit about later on in the presentation. And really important was the students' cultural norms and how they live and succeed is who they are their strong cultural identity, the wairua, their whanaungatanga are all high status learning. So making who they are valid so they can bring who they are into the learning environment. And um, if any of you have read um, Park's work, that sense of place is a fundamental human need. Uh, Pina Tito talks about this as well. So we can't be anywhere without being in a place and that is the, the important aspect of those connections with significant places. So um, at the beginning of our project, so this had been after the Hui Taurim had gone for several years, we got a, um, some key players together. So one was uh, the Ngāti Kuata General Manager, and then we had um, our TLIF team from Nayland College, and we had a broad green intermediate um, staff in, across the road. And um, so we involved them as well because we wanted the curriculum to be from seven to 10. And then we had um, Callum O'Leary from Waka Able Tasman, who's got a lot of knowledge of uh, Purako, of the Able Tasman of the Nelson area, and met him through Waka trips and just saw what he brung. And so we really wanted to involve him in our journey. And so what we did is we actually had a, a Waka hiringa together in the Able Tasman modelled the approach that we want to use, did things like jumped off the waka, swum, um, ate together, and that was the, the basis of our team. So that was an incredible way to, to get together and talk about our kaupapa and what we wanted to achieve. Uh, there was also a trip for our staff, which was around the two year 250, which um, was around 250 years of connections between Tiriti and Tangata Whenua, but it became about the Pacific voyaging and the history of Pacific voyaging, being able to visit the uh, the Waka Haurua, the double hold canoes, um, and to have that time together. And uh, that was a fantastic experience for, for that group of staff. And uh, same thing, staying overnight at a camping ground, eating together, experiencing Waka Haurua together was really, really um, valuable. And so that led to our staff coming up with different modules that they were going to teach for the junior program. And so this one here is uh, one of our mathematics teachers. And um, prior to the pōhiri, the students looked at symmetry and um, they looked at whakatū marae. So they looked at different pictures and um, did some investigations and they made three-dimensional models. And um, you can see one of them has actually got even the shoes there at the front. And then we had photography students taking pictures of them. And um, so it was a great collaboration between different subject areas. And it just made it way more meaningful when those students actually got to visit the marae and, um, and experience it for themselves. And so that's one of the um, photos that one of the photography students has uh, photoshopped there. And then we had um, another mathematics teacher and um, she sort of was slow to get off the ground and she sort of said, oh, I feel like I haven't done as much as other people. But for her, it was about that permission to use the outdoors as a learning medium to actually visit places like um, there was a stream that went from... Uh, the valley, which was a few K from our school, it flowed through our contributing schools. So um, there was a primary, a kindergarten and intermediate. And then it went um, through our school and then out the uh, Waimea estuary. So it was a significant place and they got to, they got to uh, explore and, um, and she organised some mathematics activities around that stream. Uh, things like the there was a cemetery within walking distance of the school, so they got to um, 
do mathematics around the stories of um, prominent people at that cemetery. And um, also she looked at cool fi fi patterns and symmetry. So she made a real start. And, um, and so that was something to build on. Then we had, uh, we had our horticulture and hospitality working together and visiting Tasman Organics Farm. And they started to ask the bigger questions and like, um, what was this land used for before? Who used to be here? What happened to those people? And um, with a lot of the history of the area that even sometimes the owners didn't know. So there was that aspect. And then also they were looking at, at using kai um, and creating koha to, um, for like our own events. And even for like, we had a hangi for our, um, as one of the activities for our hui taurima. So things like that. And then our, um, then they also looked at past, present, future. So that was going to the Oakland's farm trip which had a, a similar thing, but it was the um, it was the mixing of the curriculum areas that was the exciting part of that. So there was the, the huamara, which was the gardening. And um, we had a Spanish teacher and she was learning te reo Māori and, um, and her student said, keep talking about Māori culture in class, keep speaking. And, um, and when we had a Matariki student awards ceremony, it was her class that uh, created our Harakiki Puti flowers, and um, also each prize winner got a, a packet of kofi seeds so they could plant their own kofi. So they were doing some really special stuff, and um, and the goal was to have our own garden, and then the um, hospitality area of the school could uh, create meals with what they'd um, what they'd planted. They're also uh, looking at rongo and um, things like harakiki and, um, and kawakawa as well, and trying to build up like a rongoa garden. So that was really exciting stuff. Uh, our PE teacher, he looked at a year 10 pipaha challenge. So it was around the school's pipaha. Uh, students also shared their own and uh, made real connections with each other. But then together, they went to significant maunga um, Moana and Awa of the Fakatu Stoke area. So it was um, paddle boarding at Tahunanui Beach and um, it was going up the Mai Tai River. Uh, it was going up uh, Puki Tuirahia Marama, so the Grampian. So they did that together and that was uh, really powerful that, for those students and that teacher. And uh, probably the one that we're most proud of was the Waka Amara and Wayfinding module that was designed. So I worked with the teachers on this one. And so it gave them experience to learn the tikanga and the skills of Waka Amara and then mathematics through navigation, so celestial navigation. And what actually ended up happening was um, we had one teacher that was a paddler and then the mathematics teacher got so into paddling that she um, now paddles every day uh, owns two waka and uh, is very, very passionate and it's really taken off and has ended up there's strong teams, but our students have found it a fantastic way to learn mathematics. Uh, part of this was also the Hui Taurima Leadership Programme, so that started with the Hui Taurima and, um, and there were a lot of opportunities for them. They were identified from the very first Hui Taurima and then from there the students actually identified who should join the group for the succession plan and they did a really good job of that so there was um, one student Wurumu who said well I sort of got into a bit of trouble when I was year nine but this group has made such a difference to me I'd like us to select a couple of Wurumus who can be part of this and we know that we can support them and, and bring out the best of them and um, they became fantastic leaders. They used to, when we planned um, hauringa or these activities, they used to come to me or um, invited Komato and Kuya around Purako. But then they finished up actually having that knowledge and skills themselves. And I got to see the tables turn and they were leading each other. And part of this program uh, they were involved in um, attending a luncheon at the 
FOMA conference, so Federation of Māori Authorities. So they got to wear the number ones. They got to um, go to conference presentations with the high flyers. Took them to Victoria University and um, to experience university life and the supports that are available for our Māori and Pacifica students. They also uh, helped me in leading a um, activity for our whole Kahuiako. So it was 250 teachers and they ran the Rongo Māori session. So uh, that was um, really powerful for them because some of them were teaching their primary school teachers or even their, their kindergarten or kohanga teachers. So that was, and they were really, really proud of that. Uh, we went to um, the French Pass and Rangitutu Kete Tonga, which is Durbal Island, and stayed at the Ngāti Kuata uh, Cultural Centre. So Nalen College's um, mana whenua is Ngāti Kuata. And, um, and we had one of the kuia that worked with us, with the Purako. She just um, drove like two and a half hours on this rough road and joined us out there. And... Um, and came out to the island with us, which was fantastic and what she brought to the experience. So um, these students were fantastic leaders and um, they assisted with the marae visits, the pōhiri. They even um, ran, well, helped me run the staff induction. And um, a lot of our new staff said, oh, just sort of heard all these things about the students at, at your school and feeling quite nervous. And then they got to meet our uh, Hui Taurima leaders and they they led the learning at significant sites. So they came out on the waka. So we went and double hold waka and it was all our new staff and some of our uh, senior leaders and students. And so the students had a um, place that they shared the Purako and histories of and, um, and led that learning, which was fantastic and the feedback from our new staff was like I can't wait to to work at the school and be part of this and um and what wonderful leaders and students we have so that was a real success um, that's some photos uh so the top left is actually um Wiramu. he's uh he's leading some learning around the um harakiki and then we have part of the the waka hauringa in the bottom left, and that is on um, Holoshaw Island. So they're talking about the history of, of that area and how it used to actually be part of the boulder bank. And here we have the historic lighthouse. And so that was a real significant area and all within paddling distance from um, the marina. And that's a picture from our, um, our French Pass leadership camp. And... Uh, and that beautiful sunrise. So it was, um, the students actually were able to gain credits during this camp. I just worked out if it was naturally occurring evidence, then they should be rewarded. They did so much work in preparation and also that cultural capability that they, um, that they brought in. So we had students lead them he whakato so they can, they can get credits for that. Uh, we had uh, students perform Waiata and um, with actions and and so she got credits for that and it was um it was fantastic they didn't do it for the credits but because it was naturally occurring evidence I was just able to tick off and um and the students said how much they enjoyed learning in this way and so even talking about significant places through the Maori tourism standards and um, having that confidence to to share with um, and have that leadership with their peers was really fantastic. So this is some of the student voice. So um, and uh, and so we had different students talking about different experiences here. So our first Hui Taurima leadership camp was in the Abel Tasman, and um, we were in the caves um, right close to if you've ever been to Split Apple Rock and. We started to play the different uh, traditional Māori musical instruments, uh, instruments in there. And we had some fantastic singers and they just started to sing. And we had blue penguins also start singing. And it was really powerful. And I actually, lucky enough, videoed that. But it was the, that uh, place responsive approach and that uh, 
link with Haora that was um, a real powerful, had a real powerful impact on our students. So you can see I've had the opportunity to go on camp with my peers and share my knowledge of Waiata and local knowledge of the area. I've been able to experience things I haven't experienced before. Uh, the wild roar of our ancestors just used to walk around the caves playing the instruments. You get that feeling of tingling in your spine. Uh, I felt that myself. And uh, he's actually talking about the same experience when we, um, when our blue penguins joined us. And then um, opened my eyes to realize that my culture is important. I can share with my children if I have them. It's important to know where you come from and know your whakapapa. And then they've talked about Victoria Uni. And, um, and the possibilities that, yeah, I can go to university. I enjoy teaching people. Uh, they actually enjoy it because it's got significance for them because they live around the area and now they know why and how things happen. It was powerful. And that significance of places and history. So really, really proud of, of those experiences. So that's a few pictures from the French Pass. Um, and it was some of our students had whakapapa connections to a lot of the Purako of the area. There's a, a family, a Fano of um, female swimmers, and they're known um, to have swum across the French Pass. It's pretty difficult. It's the uh, fastest flowing water in the Southern Hemisphere. And, um, and so, yeah, it's... Uh, there was three, three from one Fano or woman that had swum across over different uh, periods of time, and uh, also there was um, all the Polaris Jack uh, stories that that were part of their area as well, and um, also links with the Kaitiaki of Ngati Kuia who were also in the area. So all those links sort of started to come together, and that's um, pictures of the staff induction and uh, our new staff learning from their students. And it's a couple of other pictures from there. And that was, uh, yeah, our students leading the learning was fantastic. So we talk about four signposts when we uh, talk about the place responsive approach. So one is being present in and with a place. So learning about flowers and flax, uh, learning about the French pass and the fast rapids and um, being engaged and going back to what the project inquiry was about, we want our students to have that haora, that belonging, and be engaged in what they're doing. And uh, yeah, and that we've got a student there talking about making their own whara and they couldn't wait to actually go to the to Fakatu and Kakati to to uh, experience it for themselves. Uh, the power of story and storytelling. And uh, I think the word power is key here. So talk way more than the history and whakapapa behind the area and what it means to be Ngāti Kuata, teach each other, uh, that link between Ngāti Kuata and our school. So there's actually an old schoolhouse on uh, Rangitoto Kititonga. And um, it was a uh, return to iwi with, after the ballots. And the school still has a, a real strong connection to to that schoolhouse, which is right on the beach, and learning about the area and the history and that growth as a team. So experiencing these places together. Apprenticing ourselves to outdoor places. So something as simple as getting your, your feet wet with the um, mathematics teacher I talked about who, who felt like she was moving into the space slowly, but she made a start, and that's the most important thing, teaching each other, learning a lot locally, um, those new friendships and, uh, and yeah, learning, learning from our places. And that brings um, signpost one and two. So that power of storytelling and that being present and in a place. And then the representation of place experiences. So it's fantastic when you see students really proud of what they've carved, what they've weaved. Uh, we've got Ilaria there with her uh, picture around Whakapapa and Pipeha. And for her, it was a really powerful experience. She was part of the leadership team from year nine when she was identified as a leader. And she learned so much about her own Whakapapa. She didn't actually realize she was Māori until 
after the hui tauruma, she went home and she talked to her dad about um about the fire, about the stingray, and how she she thought of herself as a stingray when she did competitive swimming, and um and it struck her when she saw images of of the fire as on the path uh, during the pohiri, and um and then her dad told her about her whakapapa and it started an amazing journey for her and in terms of her cultural identity and then things like students being able to take home what they've made uh, so we had some students making kites and just the pride that they had and what that actually created you can see some made waka haurua there um, and I yeah some got to actually make um, traditional Māori musical instruments and record a song so it was fantastic. So this is an image that um, that one of our uh, teacher leads came up with, and so she was an art teacher to show the relationship between cultural and place responsive pedagogy, and it was about nurturing that mana for for all through understanding our unique places and cultures. So it was a fantastic experience for for our staff as a PL opportunity, but. Um, also for our students and our students that became leaders and um, and yeah we are really really proud of of what we've achieved and what our students have achieved yeah so yeah that's that's that or can you think of any questions Sophie oh, I just think it's such an amazing um, you know story of all the things you achieved in your time there and, and a great case study for us all to look at and um, even just picking up one aspect of that would be pretty amazing um, so thanks so much for being really willing to share um, that with us no worries yeah I, I should have said it's just important to start like if yeah. you didn't start and it can be as simple as learning Paraka around place names or um, the impact of um, incorrect translation through pronunciation and examples of that. Like, where are we, how did the place get its name? But yeah, that's that's the most important thing is, yeah. is making a start. How did you um, go out and start making those connections? Was it through joining the Waka Club or what was the... Yeah, I... Um, I contacted, I found out who the school, the mana whenua of the school was, and I contacted Ngāti to Trust, and um, and I asked if I could come to one of their hui. And so I I went along and, and made connections. So I went, I went along to them, and, yep. um, yeah, and got the GM, you know, interested and involved him in, in something worthwhile. We never wanted it to be um, like a one-way relationship. We really wanted it to be reciprocal. And um, and it was part of, at the time, Ngāti uh, succession plan. So some of our hui taurima leaders were also, they were looking to be iwi leaders. So the, the skills and capability was um, beneficial for, for school and for the iwi. Yeah. So that was really good. And yeah, my initial Waka Ama Club was Whakatū Marae, so um, that was really good to to get to know people in the community as well. So yeah, yeah but it was yeah making the effort to initiate a um, a genuine, authentic relationship. I think was the important part. Yeah, and you've shown us it can be done, and and you've done such an amazing job with this. So yeah, like I said, thank you so much for. Um, been willing to share because it's you know it's one thing to do it yourself but it's another thing to just put it all out there and let everyone else um kind of see what you've been up to and use ideas so yeah thank you no thank you i'll stop the recording there Can I keep everybody? <laughs>